the destination is the northeast of Brazil, an immense region known for its light, long, sandy beaches. Lining a coast swept by the wind, fishermen of the Brazilian Nordeste have learned to face the sea with a curious boat. They venture out into the open sea to catch the fish they need. But these fishermen are also born competitors. More than anything, they love to test their navigating skills during regattas that reward the best sailor in the village. Take the boom and bring it here. Luis is 21 years old, and already he has a lot of experience at sea. Take the wedges. He's a fisherman, just like his father and grandfather before him. And every day he jumps on board a jangada, a boat typical of this part of the coast in Brazil, that can be translated as raft. The jangada is what we're best at. It's sturdy, solid, well-designed. The jangada offers the best safety. We always try to improve it by making it thinner and thinner so it stays as close as possible to the sea. Strong, constant winds sweep the coast. The sea here is difficult and often dangerous. Those venturing out must have a good knowledge of sailing. And more than anything, they must be able to maneuver the jangadas. These slender boats particularly effective at navigating across waves. The ones able to do so are called jangadeiros. They live in the northeast of Brazil. Luis lives in Canto Verde, a small village of a thousand people with a large community of fishermen. This upgraded windsurf board is, quite unexpectedly, a very efficient skiff. The jangada goes as far as the fisherman dares. It can be 15, 16, 20 kilometers. A good jangadeiro knows where the fish are. He's capable of locating them. If you're not capable of doing that, or you don't know how to sail, then you can't catch anything. Nothing at all. You have to know the sea to recognize the marks on the surface. That way you know where to throw your nets. When you know all this, then you're a good jangadeiro. When the sun sets behind the dunes, most jangadeiros from Canto Verde head back home. They bring back to their family the fish they have caught. This is my house. I live here with my family, my father and my three brothers. Adriana, Luis's mother, is in charge of the house. Ivan, his 52-year-old father, is a renowned fisherman. He's a commander, or master, as the ones able to lead crews during several days of fishing are called here. Luis is 21 years old and already married and a father. He shares his parents' house with his wife and children, 
but hopes one day to be able to be independent. I'd like to become a commander so that I could sail as much as possible. But I need enough knowledge and experience to gain the trust of those I sail with. I think I can make it, but I must be determined and move forward. That's the price to pay to become a boatmaster. I must teach him correctly so that he does everything right and doesn't hurt himself or have an accident. It's all about trust. He must be able to count on his knowledge and I must be able to count on him. And all of this takes time, of course. We have to move on carefully. An example, when we sail in the evening and there's no GPS, I must teach him how to read the stars. And so during the night we look at them together to know when to jump on board and where to go. If I don't properly share my knowledge with him, such as everything I know about the location of the stars and their light cycles, the consequences for him and his crew could be dire. If he's unable to get his bearings, it's easy for him to get lost at sea, which can be very dangerous. The northeast of Brazil is poor. Ivan's family survives thanks to what little money they manage to get from the sea. Trophies won during the regattas are often the only decorations in a house. They're displayed in an obvious way so that everyone can quickly estimate the worth of the sailor living here. The culture of these fishermen places great respect and esteem on the winners of such competitions between Jangadiros. We have the same blood. He has the same willpower as me. He wants to win, to be honored by his friends, just like me. I've given him this passion. I trained him so he'd want to win the races. Such competitions oppose the best fishermen and brighten up the life of the coastal villages, a life of work and routines. Little by little, boats and crew members gather on the beach, getting ready for the regatta that is about to start. The choice of the sail and the method to adjust the rigging are well-kept secrets that will make a difference for the best fishermen. Friends and advisors busy themselves around the boats. Every family has a champion they hope will win the race. That's a lot of pressure for Lewis, which affects his mood. All of this must be fixed better. Look here, it's not even straight. This is not serious work, really. A few seconds before the race begins, the boats are placed on the starting line. Luis has one of the best spots. Ivan, on the other hand, is a bit to one side and has little hope of an easy victory. Luis's boat takes a good position right from the start. But the race is long, almost two hours. The contestants must sail twice around the boys with a black flag. The wind has a speed of 20 to 25 knots and the crews must control their speed and turn as close to the boys as possible to avoid losing ground. Luis is stressed because of the regatta. He knows that his father, me, is one of the best champions among the jangaderos and he wants to be better than me. He wants to show me that he deserves to be a commander because he makes the right choices. He doesn't want to fail. But despite a good start, Lewis makes a mistake. On the last lap, he turns too far away from the boy. Another contestant catches up and overtakes him. 
He's now 50 metres away from the leader. He'll finish the race second, a couple of minutes after the winner. Thus conceding to his opponent the joy of a victory he very much hoped for. You did it all wrong. You went too far away from the buoy and the other guy overtook you. You should have stayed much closer to it. You turned way too late. Well, it'll be for next time. We're already preparing the next regatta. They'll be very skilled people. It'll take place in two months. Second place is a bitter result for someone who had dreamed of becoming a champion, just like his father. But he also knows that he's only 21 and that the future lies ahead. Luis is one of the village's best sailors and probably one of the next masters. He'll have other opportunities to show off his skills to everyone. On the beach, Ivan is preparing the evening meal. He knows that his son Louis will assume command of a boat in a couple of years, despite not winning this last regatta. A bit further away, a group of musicians is rehearsing their capoeira movements, the famous Brazilian martial art. The beach of Canto Verde is shared by every villager. I gave him the strength of character and the will to fight. I'm convinced he'll be a good boatmaster. In my heart, I can feel something beautiful. I feel a lot of pride. It's a great pleasure to see my son becoming a true sailor, just like me. My wife is very proud of him too, and we won't stop here. I have another younger son. I'm already teaching him the knowledge necessary to navigate, just like I did with Luis before. And so all of my sons will be able to defend our fishing tradition and become great boatmasters. That's what I wish with all my heart. As is often the case in Brazil, rain shows up suddenly. A bit like all these unexpected events that turn these people's destinies upside down.